And it is another admission season. Candidates around the country are uh, jostling for the number of universities that we have in the country, as well as the various uh, programs. Nigeria's first specialized medical and health sciences university, the University of Medical Sciences, UNIMED, located in Ondo City, Ondo State, has about 40 various programs that candidates can choose from. Today, a special focus on physics, and I have guests in the house. Uh, let me start with an uh, introduction. Uh, from my far right, can we meet you, sir? Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you, sir. To my immediate uh, right. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. My name is Abdelfattah Baloko, a professor of medical research. Um, currently, I'm working in the physics department of the Department of Medicine and Sciences. Uh, me, Department of Medical Sciences. In the med. Okay. Uh, I've been Thank you, sir. And now to my immediate left, and we meet you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. My name is Isola Dosa Badejimo. Um, I'm a graduate of physics from the University of Medical Sciences. And presently, I'm doing my master's in medical physics. I'm All right. also in physics. OK, and then to my far left, sir, can we meet you? Thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Pascal Chokosa. Thank you, sir. Uh, let's start the, uh, the ball rolling with uh, Professor Raymond Jinga. Uh, why study physics? For example, we have lots of programs in this university, medicine, dentistry, nursing, physical therapy, and a host of others. Why will a candidate choose to study a course like physics? Thank you. <coughs> Meaning that uh, <coughs> the term of physics, I mean, students coming to read physics uh, with us <coughs> have not been encouraged. So I, I find not um, happy because our people around, they have not really gotten the juiciness, the happiness, why someone would read physics. <coughs> they have gone past the bound where people think when you read physics, Giants 
Doing the yeah. up to the point that last year we could not get I mean, a good number of students. So, the good news is that reading physics, especially medical physics, we are privileged because this program, medical physics, was just newly, you know, accredited or it's a new program. My own time, we had nothing like medical physics. You only start medical physics at the master's level. Okay. So, if the, the children now, they have the privilege. Thank you very much. Sir. Uh, let me come to Professor Balogun. Uh, why is this uh, as a program relevant to a Nigerian child today? Professional. Mm. I chose to be a lecturer because I believe I need to impart knowledge to the children. And I, I believe I've done a lot of that. And there are many of my, <coughs> of my students working in various aspects in the oil industry. I have several of them in the business uh, industry, the so called uh, I. I Nice one. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, let me switch over to Professor Pascal Chokosa. Am I right? Okay, sir. So how can physics as a program change the society? For example, Nigeria, 
um, how will having more students coming for this program physics affect the overall development of the country? Sir? Well, for great, uh, Thank you, sir. Um, let me put Ms. Uh, Adejumo on the toes here. What was this like studying physics in Unimed? Your experience? Thank you very much. Okay, back to you, uh, Professor Haska Shokosa. Shok yes, uh, so, the next question is how lucrative? Because in the Nigerian economy, people are thinking of, okay, how much can I make studying physics? Okay, if I study medicine, I can make this. But physics, what can I get? How lucrative is this profession? Department, for example, you know what they are using there is a basic. Principle. 
percent for our measuring potential. You know our heart beat. Eh? Mm -hmm. If you amplify the energy of that heart, we can power, we can power the, the, the city, the electricity. It's mm -hmm. the pump, it's providing energy. So the basic principle is that the potential we measure, we put the electrode one at a zero as a reference, and then the other. Then we measure now the potential. I mean the the rate at which it pump, it pump uh, the the blood. And what the cardiology do is what? You know, you can pump for the normal heartbeat. The curve will move to reach for about the two millimeters height. Then, if you put that one aside for a normal heart, uh, heartbeat, then the other one curve that is less than, less than two millimeters, okay. or above two millimeters, you mean that there is a problem. And that's a basic principle, basic thinking principle. You know, the curve that is the normal one, the height is two millimeters. Then you have another one, the height is less than two millimeters or above two millimeters. So it's a lot of things mm. that are counting on. Well, it can be due to the, the equipment itself, mm? or yeah. it can be due to the diseases. And that is the role of the medical physics. Mm. You know, I'm always referred to medical because, you know, many people want to do medicine mm. without knowing that. Not knowing that if you are not a good physicist, you cannot do a good medicine. I think that explains why we have these programs in the university right from the right onset. From the, yes. Mm. Right now that I'm here, I'm in most several departments. There are several mm. departments where I intervene. Mm. You know? So just to tell you that by doing physics, you have a multiple of choice. Lots of opportunities. You can decide to choice, you can decide to go to all companies. Actually, I'm the former uh, one of the uh, radiation safety advisor for NNNRA. Wow. So, you come, you have to set up an uh, x ray, I mean, you are mounting x ray, mm. uh, radiation materials. I have to come and check mm. before I can give my approval, uh, my recommendation. And mm. the recommendation that the NNRA will use to give you license or not. Mm. And I also start a several capabilities, the World Health Organization, in mm. various countries. Mm. So those are the things. If I did not do physics, I won't be able to achieve all those things. Thank you. So a lot of opportunities a come of opportunities from of physics. Opportunities. Thank you very much. So let me go back to Professor Raymond Jinga. Sir, um, a lot of emphasis these days on entrepreneurship. And uh, I want to ask, can you link the study of physics to a business, for example? Is there any way that it is related to business? <laughs> Thank you very much. And that's a very technical and nice question. It almost relates to what my colleague said. Um, you can relate it in so many endeavors. For example, <coughs> uh, I'll take an experience. When I was, I went to a training in Qatar, and one of the sessions, Business analysis, business organization. Mm. And the concept they asked us was go and think if the United States government gives you two million dollars, okay. how can you invest it as a business? Now, the first thing I, that came into my mind is a cancer center in the north. When I did the calculation, I realized how many cancer centers do we have in the north? Do you know that if you start up a cancer center, you just buy just one of the equipment, which we will train on how to use those equipment, you channel the whole of the whole of Central Africa okay. to that that center. Mm. And as a businessman, you these procedures can be you, you know converted in terms of your pocket, money mm. in your pocket. So as a physicist, knowing so much. We should not really, really emphasize on just the radiation aspect of it. Just imagine you can do it with the PAC in electronics. And you go into fabrication of chips. As I was teaching my students, okay, this IC is, there is nothing in the IC. But how you play with transistors, how you play with the diodes, and so the the. <coughs> Design, okay, where people could, but if you go and change some of the parameters, you have made it. Mm -hmm. 
So there is a lot of business in physics. The most important thing is, just as my colleague here has said, most of us, even myself, we just find ourselves in physics. We are not really, our parents were not really there to tell us that. So people are privileged to hear us talk. That, in short, if you ask me and my children, which course do you think they want to do? They go and do physics. Physics is crazy. In the first place, in Nigeria, the population of people coming to do physics, they are few. Okay. And Dinimen is offering it free. It's not even free, but when I say free, compared to other universities, our, our tuition fee here is nothing. So becoming a big business person as a physicist is a wow. Thank you, sir. Uh, talking about the fees, let me come back to Ms. Adejumo. Uh, what did you pay to study physics in Unimed? Okay, so it, it means it, it draws. Wow. Okay, thank you very much. So you've had that just for, it means for 150,000 era at the start, and it keeps uh, dropping as we uh, uh, proceed in the academic. Uh, nice one. Uh, let me come back to you, Professor Balogun. You are a professor in physics. What are the benefits that you can share to encourage parents and the young ones to study this uh, program? Though I'll come back to Professor Jiga for the requirements exactly for the programs, but let's start with you. Uh, your ways of encouragement to parents and young ones, Professor Balogun. Thank you very much. Physics, as we have been saying, is the most important subject in education. Mm -hmm. Development. certain distances it's, and that distance has to be exact and it, you need to be able to tell the computer how to go to each of those registers and send those signals say five votes to this part zero votes to that 
so many times that if I feel like this, then we send this to the machine, and the, machi the motor of the machine moves the new sand that we expected it to move without pressing. And then it will be blown by nothing. Nothing can be done in that respect. This is a go through so many transformations, and most of the people that now work in, say, engineering, what they are really doing is application of the findings of the physics. Okay. Uh, and I will advise our our parents that doing physics does not limit your 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 child sure. to being a teacher in secondary school or so. Mm. I was a physicist. In nineteen ninety eight ninety nine I was in And I introduced a, a job, I mean, uh, a method to them called continuous scattering tomography mm. to study the soil because they had problem of compassion of soil where irrigation was becoming a problem. And that continuous scattering process, they were, they were able to use it to determine what was the cause of this compassion, which was the factor they were able to compacting the soil and the water was not able to percolate into the soil at the rate as if they expected. Mm -hmm. They are still progressing. But I saw my name being cited in a number of their papers mm -hmm. based on what we have gone together, I mean we have done together in the 1998 uh, period. Mm -hmm. If you Google my name you will see that uh, they are they call it agricola or something. They are still mentioning what we have done. In those days. And we also had something which we use continuous scattering to determine the uh, the amount of fat in calves, in uh, cows, because they are agricultural set of the institute, institute that went to work on agriculture. Okay. They develop uh, techniques in agricultural application. And those two things I was able to do here. So which means physicists can work in agri. They can work in business, they can work in medicine, they can work in the in aerospace. Mm. So my my next question to you, Prof. So there are lots of institutions offering this program, physics. Why will the candidates come and study it at Unimed? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. My area as I've mentioned before. Mm. Medical physics. When we say medical physics, the best place to study it mm -hmm. will be in the area where the physicist can marry his physics knowledge to medical applications. I agree. They do medical here. I mean, like I have a student here, I mean, a postgraduate student doing okay. this project. Without the availability of a hospital here. Mm. He would have to go to several other places to carry out his project. Mm. But he has a first hand knowledge or first hand chance to come and do that work here in the hospital. And he can interact with his mates who are in medicine to be able to tell them this is what I'm doing. What do you think about this? They too can ask him, but we had this problem in our study. What do you think can do in this area. So the lecturers can mix with those people that are in medicine, and the, those in medicine can also talk to the medical physicists. So I think that the university should actually uh, propagate medical physics as a physicist there. That is, a, that is the specialty that we relate to this university as University of Med Medical Sciences. Medical physics is medical science. It's part of medical science. Mm. I mean, I mean, I wonder where the uh, medicine would be without physics. <laughs> Zero. Zero. Yeah. I mean, without that x-ray, then we have to go back to Da Vinci period, where you have to slice the man, slice the body, mm. and look <laughs> at <laughs> it. But no, but no, physics started x-ray. Okay. Then they came up with CT, say that we are seeing only 
three-dimensional body in two-dimensional space. We want to see three-dimensional body in three-dimensional space. That is, if that is what physics said. It wasn't medicine that said it. It was physics. And they started seeing pass radiation through, take many projections, solve the problem, I mean, add some famous uh, equation to have a number of half millions of simultaneous equations and use the computer to solve this problem. And then you get an image, a three-dimensional image in three-dimensional space. That, and then you can see information with depth. I mean, you want to look at the heart, you take x-ray, the, the, the bone of the chest has already impaired, shield the heart. You don't know the detail of what is happening there. But take your, take your CT, mm. everything is there for you to see. So without CT, without MRI, without X-ray, there's no medicine. Without cardio, uh, cardiology, I mean, the yeah, cardiology, mm. without electrocardiogram, we are this uh, cardiology, with audit, audit, auditory, we are there. In every aspect of the medical life, we are there as mm. medical physicists. And today, my, with my brother, I want the, our people to learn, our mothers, I mean our parents. Mm. The cancer problem is going out of control. And the, major, the most important way to treat cancer today is through radiotherapy. And without medical physics, that can there is no radiotherapy. Okay. Even the oncologist told me at the meeting we had, I happen to be the president of the Nigeria Medical Physics Association. Mm. We had a conference in Calabar couple of months back, November, and the cardiologist was giving his experience saying that without medical procedures, there's no oncology. It's not about the doctor alone. No, not about the doctor alone. When, when I was serving the Nigerian Nuclear Regulatory Authority, I served there as a director for about six years, we wanted to register radiotherapy, and just like my friend said, we wanted to establish the radiotherapy section in, in North. The whole of Nigeria, during those days, there's no single radiotherapy department that is licensed because they don't have medical facilities. Yeah. Because when we came to plan the treatment, it will be a medical facility. And that's a program that we now have in the university that's for just 150,000 era for a whole session. Exactly. Interesting stuff. Thank you very much, Professor Balogun. Uh, you've dwelled much. I don't know if Ms. Adejuma would like to add something on this, on the benefit of having uh, studying physics in Unimed. You've been here for the past how many years? And well, did you go on strike? Did you, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> no, I gained admission 2016. Okay. This four years, I also told you guys this. There was no strike, there was no struggle. So it was smooth. And even immediately after we graduated, okay. back, some of my mates came back for MSc. Those are not in Nigeria. Okay. Some are abroad studying related physics courses abroad. So even the last of the publication, the best there is a student mm -hmm. of physics. Wow. So two of them for class. Yes, two students. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting stuff there. I don't know. There are lots of uh, things that I think may encourage. What about the uh, manpower? Do you have enough hands to train the students in the physics, in medical physics? Uh, do, do we have the hands? Although I know I'm surrounded with a lot here. Though, pro Three professors, three professors, uh, I think uh, that explains. Uh, what about other staff? Do you have them? And the, the facilities are there to train them. In all, all the, I, don't, I don't think NUC will even approve that we run those, that program without those facilities uh, or the equipment for their training. Uh, instead of bothering uh, Professor Jiga, let me go to, finally now, to Professor Pascal Sokosa. Um, 
what will it take to study physics at GDMED? The requirements, what are the things needed? Oh, well, uh, I think it's just uh, the basic requirements at the jam level. Okay. Biology, biology, then okay. Okay. Yes, for physics, I am not really biology. I think mathematics, English, mathematics, physics, chemistry. Okay, so geography may surface if you. Oh, okay. Okay, and then in jump, you must uh, write jump. Yeah, you must write jump. Okay. 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 Interesting one. Uh, let me say. Uh, okay. In addition, you know, in addition to what uh, the president of Nigeria has recommended that we set for the council, you know, the beauty of studying physics here in Limit okay. is that you have that uh, ability to carry it from the theory mm. to the practicals. Mm. That is, if I explain, I'm talking about ultrasound propagation. How did you propagate? From the theory from the class and move it directly. And by the time you look at the equipment practically and I carry out the procedure directly, they remain in the brain. Mm. They remain directly in the brain. And then that is one. Then two, the counter problem, like uh, my colleague said, brought that. You know, if you check the department that are dealing with the uh, cancer treatment, I mean the linear uh, institution that are dealing with cancer treatment, where you have the medical physicists, all the department that handle radiation without the medical physics, and those with the medical physics, we see now that the discrepancy is parallel. There are a lot of damages where there is no medical physics than where you have the physicists. Mm. Why? The, the answer is very trivial for a layman. Now, you know that if I want to take the X-ray of your chest, of your heart, you will pass through various organs. Right? Before, Before getting to the heart. the heart. Now, you will pass through the bone, the skin, the flesh, and all those ones. And the each organ has its own sensitivity, different from the sensitivity of the bone mm. from radiation, different from the sensitivity of the muscles, and all those ones. So, in radiation treatment, or cancer treatment, you know where you have already measured that, okay, to go to, I'm targeting, I want to deliver a dose of radiation of this to the heart, for example. Then you will pass through various organs before reaching that heart. Now, if I need about 10 grade to hit the heart, right? Mm. That 10 grade, if I send it 10 grade, most of many of them will be losing out the way. At least attenuation. So I need to send about 12 grade or 15 more for him to reach. And that one already is already in danger to all the various organs that will pass through him before he reaches the heart. That is the role of the medical physicist, treatment planning. How am I going to deliver that 12 to without damaging other organ that we pass through? So you can see, handling it without a medical physicist is just a palliative. It's not worth it. And it's, the result is obvious. It's destructive. It's destructive. It's destructive. So you can see, that is a layman language explanation for you to understand the role of the medical physicist. Thank you very much, sirs and the ma, for joining me on this uh, special edition of the program. Um, let me say I have two names here that I've been trying to uh, manage all through this program, and I'd like to know more about the names. First, the one of uh, Professor Raymond Jinga, and that of uh, Professor Pascal Chakosa. Uh, your, your name, sir. Let, let's use that as a passing shot here. Let me start with you. What's, your, what's the name? 
Wait, yeah. What is, is the origin of the name? And uh, yeah, my name in those days, um, you know, our parents used to protect. When I talk about our forefathers, they used okay. to protect us from foreign um, and then from uh, people who want to do a particular thing. Okay. So if you are given that name, Jinga, it means that you are a protector. That means it, it sounds something like Balogun. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it will be like a balogun who is protecting. Uh, it's like in the next school. Okay. <laughs> okay, for you, Prof. Yes, my name is Pascal Chokoso. Pascal, you know, Pascal has done a lot in science. Okay. 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 Then the other one, Chokosa, mm -hmm. is that one you want? Yeah, yeah, so I mean. Chokosa is like, um, you know, in the past. It's from where? Eh? It's in, uh, where? No, 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 I'm just talking about it. Okay, <laughs> okay. In the past, if you have a very nice friend mm. that you want to immortalize, mm. eh? that you want to immortalize, okay. you can afford, that like you can say, okay, if Hitler, Hitler, for example, was a close friend you have, your father can decide to name one of his sons Hitler yeah. so as to keep Hitler alive. Mm. So that's how my name is. Okay. Probably that is why it sounds... Uh, <laughs> That's Ocean State. Ocean State. Yes. Wow. Interesting yeah. one. Yeah. Um, let me say a very great pleasure having you three professors and Mr. Dejumo here. Yeah? Uh, thanks for joining us on this program, Professor Jinga. Thank you very much. And uh, we are happy to have you, Professor Balogun. And uh, Mr. Dejumo. Uh, Professor Chokosa. That will be the size of this edition of the program. You've had it all. Physics is the basis of development. Hence, you've been encouraged by three eminent professors of physics to go for this program because uh, it is a way of uh, contributing to the development of the country for the whole world in general. And uh, we have a version of it which is medical physics that can actually help you to fulfill your dream in contributing to the development of health uh, as well. So if you are picking your form for JAM uh, form, don't forget you can always apply for this program and uh, for more details of uh, programs and how to apply, you can visit our website www.unimed.edu.org NJ, and from there you can see the details on how to apply for the post UTME or other inquiries that you like to make. For inquiries, actually, you can send a mail to admissions at unimed.edu.ng. Again, admissions at unimed.edu.ng. Or you can call Miss Pumbe Ladapo on 0813 5513654. I take that again 0813 5513654. Six five four. My name is Timmy Tukwe Uluwatayo. Enjoy your day.